name is Rabeb. I am a product manager with the Microsoft Graph team. And today we will be talking about Postman and the Microsoft Graph collection on Postman. Just in case you are not familiar with what Postman is, so Postman is uh, an API platform, uh, a very powerful API platform uh, that enables you to build um, and test APIs. Um, it's really an amazing tool and uh, very loved by a lot of developers uh, because of a very uh, rich set of features. One of those uh, really amazing features on Postman is collections. And as the name uh, indicates, collections are groups of API requests that are organized together into folders. Uh, one, to make your work um, space looks more organized, but also they are a, a great way to collaborate with your uh, team members as you can fork those collections and uh, collaborate on them together. Um, it's also a great way if you need to generate some um, APIs, documentation and tests. So uh, the good uh, news uh, for us is we do actually have a Microsoft Graph collection on Postman. So if you're using uh, Microsoft Graph and if you love Postman, um, we brought Microsoft Graph to you on Postman. In the, I forget to mention, so this is actually the third or fourth session of a series we did on uh, Postman and um, Microsoft Graph. Uh, so before the summer break, in the previous sessions, we went through, you know, what's Postman, how you can um, set up an uh, Azure Active Directory application and then authenticate uh, to be able to use the Microsoft Graph collection. We even um, went through how you can create your own kind of uh, personalized, customized, Postman collection using Graph Explorer and then you can import it on Postman, how you can use the collection runner, etc. Uh, I will make sure to leave all the relevant links for you here, especially the one with the step-by-step -step guide. Oh, I see Fabian already did that. Thank you very much, Fabian. So that's like uh, the guide on how to use Postman with uh, Microsoft Graph. And today we will continue. No, we don't want to run this. Um, <laughs> today we're going to continue uh, with um, some more uh, advanced features of Postman, uh, particularly scripting. So scripting basically is adding some dynamic behavior um, to requests and collections if you do need to add that. So that allows uh, you to write, you know, tests or maybe build some requests that have dynamic params or even passing data between requests. Now, um, this is particularly useful in the case of using Microsoft Graph because um, the chances of you needing, you know, a piece of information, some data from a request to another is really high. Like, you need user ID to do a lot of things with the API. Now, if I can share my browser, I can show you Postman. I am on Postman. This is my workspace and I have the right environment here. So, and I did authenticate. So this all should work as it should. <laughs> uh, right. So as I mentioned, sometimes you need a piece of, of information from one request to another. For example, uh, let's say I am doing some sort of, you know, operations. My applications uh, requires me to do a few things with teams. If I look here, I see I can get all the teams that I'm part of. Um, one thing I might be interested in is for one specific team is to maybe see the channels or even create created channel, etc. And for that, I will need to have the exact team ID that I'm interested in to do anything else. Now, to do this, 
um, the, the flow, the concept with Postman is fairly easy and straightforward. Passing uh, data or dynamic params, basically, we store that as an environment variable. Just to store it as an environment variable and then use it as needed. So, if you see here, for example, for me to get the channels, I will need the team ID. Go to my environment. On this environment, I have one variable that is called team ID. And then I can set the value to whichever value I need. Um, let's say, for example, I can see here that I do have five teams. And if I go, I'm going to just change the value for the sake of doing this. So if I copy this value and then set it on my variable here, make sure I'm saving. And then if I go and see the channels, it should show me the new value. As you can see here, it's a new value and then send. I can see which channels I have in there. It's simple, it's easy, but let's face it, copy pasting manually like this is not particularly useful, especially if you are dealing with a more complex scenario. There must be a better way to do this. And that's where uh, scripting came in handy. So these scripts are basically uh, just pieces of JavaScript code. And if, like me, you're not a JavaScript developer, please don't be intimidated by this because it's fairly easy. And for the most common scenarios, you need two lines of code. So don't worry, we, we can survive this JavaScript situation here altogether. And here is where all the magic happened. It's really not magic. Basically, Postman has a, a sandbox where all these scripts would run. Now, this is tests, and this is where we're going to put those scripts. Now, luckily for us, I did not write any of this. This came by default with when I forked my uh, Microsoft Graph collection. And uh, as you can see here, this is like, uh, basically to guide me as a user to make sure that I am properly authenticated. Um, this one is really useful for me because this is in case I don't have the right permissions. It will say, no, you can't, you know, you can't run this because you're missing some scopes. Go to your Azure Active Directory, you know, uh, dashboard and add um, the permissions that you need. Now, to pass data to basically to make sure that that variable that we have on the environment is set to the exact value that we need it to, all we have to do is this. So we're going to pass the response body. Now that requires also that we take a good look at this response body to know the exact value, what we are interested in. And then all I'm saying here is from this response body, I want you to set the environment variable with the name team ID to the ID of the first value you get. And that's because here it says it's called value. It could be something else and I will need to use um, the right value. Uh, obviously, you get here, it's really, it's brilliant. You get autocomplete and uh, the usual, you know, writing code uh, stuff, basically. So that's what I'm getting. Um, now, because I have this, if I run this, it should change this environment value to the first one again. So I did run this. I go in here. And then I see it did change again. So now if I'm running this, it will show me 
uh, yes, it should show me something different because it's a different team. So if I try here, it says I have five channels. I wonder if it's different. Yes. And for this team, I have simply uh, one channel. Um, obviously, this is an example. You could have as many variables as you want, name them, you know, as appropriate as you need and use them here to pass basically to pass data and to have dynamic params uh, in here. So um, that's one thing um, I wanted to show. The other thing that I wanted to show, and again, this might be very useful in the case of uh, the Microsoft Graph collection. Last time, if you were with us, when we showed the collection runner, which I can show again. So if you go here, if I say run collection, as you see, this like Microsoft Graph collection is a fairly big collection. So this collection here is, is big to, to run and it may not even make sense for you to run everything. Yes, you can manually deselect and then select the items that you're interested in. But again, this might not be the, the best way to do it. A great way to do it though is chaining and chaining requests is making sure that you are setting what's the next request to run after a specific request and to do that what i need to do is postman and set next request and then you simply set your next request and whichever name you have here so i could say get I, i'm gonna create channel because that's easy um, now, few things to note about this. This is irrelevant if you're using the send here. So if you are uh, just running this request individually, nothing would happen with this postman set next request. This is only useful in the case of a collection. So this is a way to set the order in which you want to run multiple requests inside um, a collection. And basically, I think that's all I wanted to show today. I'm not sure if, hopefully I'm not over time because last time I was over time. Um, you're right on time, Rabeb. So 15 minutes slots. Uh, so this is all good. So thank you. Thank you for showing that and, and showing those Brilliant. new things. Really, yeah. really cool. And we'll we'll add on the blog post summary, of course, the, the references to the uh, assets so people can easily access that from the recording. Yeah, and if you have any questions, uh, please uh, let me know on the chat and uh, we can take that. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you, thank you Rabeb, on that one. Really, really cool. Thank you.